Hello guys and uh, welcome back. So what we're going to work on now is getting a model uh, that's actually a real world model into our Stingray project. Um, so what we're going to start with is this record player and I'm going to show you a couple different ways that we can bring this model into Stingray and, uh, and work. Now um, we're not going to start with this fully textured version. Um, this is just uh, one of the methods where we're going to go ahead and do all the shader graph work in Maya and send that file over to Stingray. But what, a, what I would like to start with is something a little more of the, I guess you could say, the more manual workflow method. So though we can do it with complete textures and full shader graphs and everything right in here, uh, we're going to start uh, by learning how to do it in the more manual method. Okay, so let me open up that model. Uh, so I've prepared this in two different fashions. Um, so here we go. And I do not want to save. Um, and here we have the exact same model uh, with exactly the same stuff. But as you can see, in this model, I have no textures applied. Okay. But what I do want you to note is that when I select any of these parts, I do have the materials properly labeled. So this is the record material, and that's a critical step. Okay. So we're going to have to name whatever we want our materials to be correctly. Okay. And the other thing that's going to be important is that all of our UVs are laid out. Okay. So I've got my record with its UV layout. Um, I've got my record player with its UV layout. Um, and this one, I'm actually, I, I ended up using uh, multiple parts, but because they're animated, I had to separate them out. So as you can see, this is a full UV sheet. I've just got it broken onto multiple parts. My pivots and did what I had to do to get it prepared uh, for animation. And then I went ahead and animated it. So as you can see, it has its animation sequence and that is all prepared as well. So this model is effectively ready to go out and I want to now send it to Stingray. So um, we've got a couple parts, we've got um, a little bit of an animation here, and we've got everything we need. Okay, so now let's go ahead and export this model and let's get this thing out into uh, Stingray. Okay, so let's go ahead and go File, Game Exporter, because this is going to contain an animation. So as you can see, I've got uh, record start, record play, record stop. So these again, um, as we discussed earlier, uh, do play the different sequences of animation. This one just continues the loop. So this is it playing and this is it stopping. Okay, so I've got my three different, you know, um, three different sets of animations uh, set as clips and I've got them set from 0 to 59, 60 to 114, 114 to 183, and those just correspond to the frames that which they uh, are using. Uh, 183 is what I need, 183 and 183 and 183. Okay, so that's the entire sequence of animation, so that should do everything, yep. So as you can see, that's the entire sequence. So from 0 to 59, goes from 0 to 59, where the needle puts down, okay? Then we have our 60 to 114, and that's the, the loop. And then we have from 114 to 183, which is it putting the needle back, okay? So there's our three different parts. And all I've done is I've gone ahead and told it where I want this path to go to, okay? So I'm saying I want it in jobs, um, record player, record player cabinet, and then it goes into the game ready folder, okay? And I've also got um, the file name, which is going to be called record player, all right? So if I hit export, it goes ahead and asks me if I want to replace it. So I'm going to say yes. And now the file has been exported. Now, to import it into Stingray, we're going to need to first launch Stingray. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm now going to navigate to Content, Models, Record Player. Now, I've already imported it once, but I'm going to go ahead and delete all these files so we can see the process again. Okay, so now that everything's clear, we're just going to go Import. And I've just got to find that location. So I'm going to go Jobs, Record Player, Record Player Cabinet, Game Ready. And I'm going to grab my Record Player. Okay, so here's the record player.fbx. Now I want to show you something interesting. Okay, so we have animations uh, in this model, but I'm not going to choose the animation and skeleton yet. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and import it without. Okay, and I'm going to hit the import button. 
and we're going to see that we get the record player model, we get the record player material, and we get the record material. But notice that there's no animations that have been imported. So if you wanted to just import this as a static asset, you can simply do that. You just uncheck the animation uh, checkbox in the import window, and it'll bring it in without the animations. And as you can see here, we have our record player, but there's no animation choices. We can't play it, we can't do anything with this, okay? So now let's go ahead and delete those again. I could just import it over the top, but I'm just going to do it clean. So I'm going to delete everything and I'm going to go import and I'm going to grab that record player again. Only this time, I'm going to say that I want the animation and skeleton with it. OK, so it's going to import all clips and I'm going to go import. And now we've got all the parts that we will need. We have our unit file. We have our animation clip. Uh, I think this is the play. Let me just open this up a little bit. So I've got play, start, and stop. Oh, and this is something that you might find useful. So on this little thing right here, you can change the way you view your, um, your layout. I like the list layout. It just works better for me. Uh, but if you like the default way, which is with the, the boxes, you can do that too. So I'm gonna go back to my little list method and uh, go through this. Okay, so we have our record play. And if we hit the play button, we will see that it's just making that loop and it's playing. If we were to go record player start, okay, we've got our record player start and we've got record player stop. Okay, so we have all of our animations imported and everything is working as we expect, but it's still just a gray model. Now, um, how are we gonna go ahead and apply our materials to this, okay? So that's gonna be the question. And this model, um, we have a special need for a special type of material because I like to work in RMA. But let's start with the regular way, okay? So let's go ahead and grab this record player material and let's grab the property editor. And we'll see that we have a color map, a normal map, a metallic map, a roughness map, emissive map, and an AO map. Now we don't have to use all of these. And whichever ones we want to use, by default, we can choose color map, you know, we can choose which maps we want to grab, okay? So, but first, before we can apply anything into these channels, we have to actually have the materials imported into Stingray. So what we're going to want to do is create a folder and import all those materials into that folder. Now, the way I like to work is to keep all of my materials that are relative to the the record player within the record player folder. So if we look here, we have models and then we have record player. I wouldn't want to put my, my textures somewhere else, but maybe that's the way you would like to do it. If you would like to have textures in an external folder, that's fine. I would recommend, however, keeping everything relative to the, the path. So if you're in, if you're bringing in record player textures, I would recommend to put them inside of record player, um, you know, inside your record player folder. Now, that doesn't mean that you want to just import them directly into this folder. It will get messy if you have all sorts of textures, animation clips, materials. I mean, that's fine if that's the way you would like to work. I prefer to keep it a little cleaner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it textures. Okay, so there's my textures folder and I'm going to go into my textures folder and now I'm going to actually import my textures. Okay, now in here I have materials and these are all the materials I'm going to need. We're going to start with the normal, we're going to start with the base color, oops, base color, emissive, normal, roughness, and I think that's all we're going to need. Uh, yeah, right, color map, normal, oh we need a metallic map. Uh, we don't need the metallic map because there is no metallic on this object. So let's go ahead and hit open. And we're just going to do the record player for now, uh, the record itself for now. So let's go back to record player. Let's grab the record material and let's jump into textures. So now this is set to record material, as you can see right here. OK, so all we have to do now is just drag these materials into place. So I'm going to drag the record base color into the base color. I'm going to grab the emissive and put that into the emissive channel. I'm going to put the normal and put that into the normal map. I'm going to put the record roughness into the roughness map. And actually, we don't really need this, this emissive because there really is no emissive. That's going to be used for our RMA material uh, later on. So now all I have to do is just check off which ones I'm going to use. So we have a color map, so I'm going to turn on color map. I have a normal map, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on normal map. I have a roughness map, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the roughness map. And that's basically it. So now if we go back here and select our record player, we'll see that the record is fully textured. Okay. Now we have the other materials to do still, but that'll be just as easy. So let's go back into our textures and now let's go ahead and go import 
and let's grab our uh, remaining parts. So we're gonna have record player base color, record player emissive, record player metallic, because this has differences in metallic and non-metallic. Um, we're gonna grab our normal, and we're gonna grab our roughness, and I believe that's it. We could bring in the AO as well, but um, I don't think we're, yeah, we'll bring in the AO as, all, as well, so I can show you that. And that's gonna be it. So let's go ahead and hit open. And now we have all the parts for that. So let's go back and grab our record player material, go back into textures, and let's start applying them. So record base color goes to the color map, record player emissive goes to the emissive channel, record player metallic goes to the metallic channel, oops, record player metallic goes to the metallic channel, Record player normal goes to the normal channel, and record player roughness goes to the roughness channel. Now again, we're gonna to wanna to turn on all the ones that we need. Oh, we can even put in the, oh, this is actually the record player cabinet AO. So let me just delete that for now. And I'm just gonna see if I actually have an AO channel for that. I don't think that I do. Uh, do I? I do not. Okay, that's proper. Okay, so now we have all those uh, pieces. And let me grab the record player material again, just make sure everything is set. And we have to turn on our color map, we have to turn on our normal map, we have to turn on our metallic map, we have to turn on our roughness map, and we have to turn on our emissive map, okay? And now we've got all the necessary pieces that we're gonna need uh, turned on and ready to go. So if we go back to our record player, save this, save our record material. This one's already saved. And if we look at our record player, it's now fully textured, okay? So this is the standard way of doing things, okay? Um, and if we were to go ahead and grab our record player and place it on stage, we can go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, so there is the record player fully imported with all of its materials. Now, by default, we are using the uh, standard material. Now, the standard material is really nice. It's extremely easy to use, as you can see. Um, it gives you a lot of options. Um, the drawback to having flexibility in a shader is performance, okay? So the more flexibility you have in a shader, the less performance it's gonna be, which means that you're kind of consuming a lot more resources than you need to. So I like to personally work with a more clean system, um, which is called uh, an RMA system, uh, which is binding a lot of things into one set of materials. And since I know that I'm gonna output all the necessary parts, I don't need check boxes to know which ones are gonna be on and which ones are gonna be off, and I don't need all that stuff, okay? So let's go ahead and do that once because this is gonna teach you the basics of how to work with a shader system, okay? And I think it'll be a very valuable uh, lesson in how to do this. So let's say we wanted to create a more optimized shader. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, this is how we're going to do it. So we're going to go into content and I'm going to go ahead and create a folder inside of content that's going to be called um, shaders. Okay, and inside of my shaders folder, oops, I re need to delete that. I named it wrong. I guess we could use this material folder. Um, we'll use shaders though. So create um, folder and S H A D E R S shaders. Okay, so now I've got this shaders folder, and within here I want to go create and I want to go material empty. Now we could start with the standard one, which would give us the ability to you know make it very complex. Um, or start with a complex shader and pare it down. This might be easier for some people. Um, in fact, when I got started, that's how I always did it, is I created the standard material and then I started taking stuff away rather than trying to figure out how to add. Uh, but we're gonna do it the, the harder way so that you can learn the entire process. So we're gonna start with material empty and we're gonna call this RMA underscore EM. And the reason I call it underscore EM is for emissive. So it's an RMA material with emissive, okay? so. RMA EM. And now I'm just going to go here and I'm going to say open shader graph. Now notice that we have a material file and we have a material, but there's no options here. There's literally nothing that we can do in this shader yet. Okay, this is a totally empty shader. It cannot take any inputs, it cannot take color, it cannot take a, a, an 
image, it can't do anything. So we're going to actually program it to do all the things that we want it to do. We're going to set it up so that it takes our material input and we're going to do all sorts of stuff like that. Okay, so, um, so let's get started. So let's hit this open shader graph and this is going to bring up a new window for you. Okay, and you're going to see basically this parent shader, okay? And this is called the standard base, okay? And there's several bases, um, and you can go add, and you can go output, and we have the decal base, light base, particle base, etc. These are all different forms of materials that we you can use within Stingray, but we're just gonna worry about the standard base for now. This is gonna work for any type of normal material that you're gonna wanna use, okay? Now, if you noticed, I went ahead and maximized. You really don't wanna do that because if you maximize, you won't be able to see the properties of the screen behind it, okay? So when you do this, what I would recommend is to kind of scale this so that you can still see your property window because things are going to relate to what you select inside of this um, inside of this window. Okay, so if I select here, notice that we're now seeing the parent of the shader. Whereas if I select this node, it shows me the details of that node. Okay, so we're going to leave all this stuff uh, normal, but just note that you can do multi-sided shading. So if you need double-sided shading, this is where you're going to find it. If you want front or back-sided shading, you know, you can you can do it all different ways. So and note that this is culling. Okay, so it culls the back. In other words, it does not show the back or it does not show the front. And then none is means it's going to show both sides. Okay, so uh, we want back back face culling okay because that's standard in, in games um, or in 3d uh, but if you had something that was showing the wrong sides you could flip it basically you could create a shader that had the flipped so it'd be showing the front or deleting the front but showing the back okay so just be aware of that you have face calling in here uh, you have blend mode so you can create transparent shaders in here we're not going to worry about that for now um, you can have normals uh, you know, what type of normals do you want? World space or tangent space? We're going to stick with tangent space. And you have material choices, okay? So we can get into cloth and fur and all this other stuff, clear coat, etc. But we're not going to worry about any of that for now, okay? What we are going to worry about is how to build a basic shader. And like I said, we're going to be going for a very optimized shader. So with an optimized shader, we want it to be really performant. So that means we're not going to actually be making a lot. We're going to be making a very simple system, okay? But it's going to be able to get you started, and it's a really good methodology for dealing with um, with games because a lot of games are using this RMA mentality where you're you're trying to pack as much into one texture as you can so uh, let's get started so we're gonna go right click and we're gonna go add add and we're gonna go um, vertex input text chord and text chord zero. So what this text chord zero is gonna re relate to is what is the UV channel, okay? And our textures are all gonna be on UV channel zero or UV channel one, um, depending on which you're using Maya or Max. Uh, they both name them kind of differently, but effectively we're using the first UV channel available which is text chord zero. Um, and that's what we're gonna wanna use, okay? Now we can use other text coordinates, okay? We can use, you know, text chord zero. And sometimes you're gonna wanna do that. Like, let's say you wanted to have a second UV channel that grabbed all your dirt and you put all your dirt on your second UV channel and you made a special, uh, you know, set of UVs on your models. You could do this, okay? Just, this is a caveat for advanced users. Um, you don't have to worry about this, but if you wanna create multiple text coordinates, you can go ahead and do so and use them to your heart's content. Um, you, you know, it fully supports that. So this is how you would do it. You would just grab your different text coordinates and you can layer um, your UV channels how you like, okay? We're not gonna do that in this. We're just gonna use a very simple um, starting method, but, uh, but you can do it if you want to, all right? So we're gonna use our primary text coordinate channel um, and we're gonna go ahead and start getting our samples, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and go sample texture and this is what's gonna actually bring in our texture file. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this RG, okay, which is gonna be our red and green channel, but really what it means is your um, uh, U and V channel because technically that's U and V. Right, we're just, it's named a little weirdly, it should be UV, but it's actually named RG for red and green because it's a two channel uh, node. So it's gonna be pumped into our UV channel and we're gonna go ahead and go add and we're gonna go sampling and we're gonna go sample texture and we're gonna do that same thing again. And we're gonna go right click, add. So we're gonna go ahead and go right click, add. 
sampling and sample texture. Okay. And this is all we're going to really need for this. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and pipe that into here. And now our top one is going to be our color map. So let's go ahead and pipe that into our base color. Okay. And we can even take this and pipe that into here and say A for the alpha channel. So if you notice, it says RGBA. So we're going to be piping the red, green, and blue channel into our base color and the opacity into our um, alpha channel. Okay. Uh, so we're not going to ever use this A. So I'm just showing you that you can. So if you wanted to do a RMA with opacity, you can do it like that. Okay. We're not going to do that. We're just going to do simple RGB into our base color. Okay. And then we're going to uh, rename this sample texture to color. And we're going to same same thing here. Display name is going to be color and the slot name is going to be color. Now, just a quick note about how this works. So your node name is the node name. So if we change this to color one, it'll say color one in this node. Okay. But the display name, which is what you will see here. So it still says color. Okay. So if I were to select this again and make this color one, the display name is going to change that. Okay. So now when you look here, you'll see color one and the last one, which is your, um, your slot name is going to be what you will use in code to call this color. Okay. So you always want to keep that lowercase. Um, and if you're going to have, um, if you're going to have it where the material has two names, use an underscore. You don't want to use spaces in here. Okay. Uh, but I, yeah, that's, that's it. So we're just going to have slot name color and we're going to turn all these back to color. So color, I don't want to get into the programming end of it, but uh, I have other tutorials on that. But for now, uh, this should do. So we have color um, and we've just named them all the same. So it's color, color and color. The only thing I did on the slot name was named it lowercase to keep in accordance with the way that I work. Um, so that's our color map. So now our color map gets from the, uh, the UV coordinates. It gets piped into our UV and we're going to pipe that RGB into the RGB base color. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, but this one is going to be a little more complicated. This one's going to be our RMA material. So let's go ahead and name it that RMA, RMA, and RMA. Okay. So this, and the reason we call it RMA is roughness, metallic, ambient. So each of the channels, roughness, metallic, and ambient are technically just black and white images. So what we've done is we're going to take all of our, um, our materials, which is the roughness, the metallic, and the ambient, and we're going to put them into one file. So the roughness channel is going to take up the red channel. The metallic channel is going to take up the blue channel and the ambient channel is going to take up the blue channel or the ambient material is going to take up the blue channel. So we're going to have RGB, which relates to roughness, metallic, ambient. Okay. So again, we have R, G and B. So we're going to have roughness fill the R channel, metallic fill the green channel and ambient fill the blue channel. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go roughness and we're going to leave that as R. We're going to take our metallic and we're going to make that G. And we're going to take our ambient and make that blue. Okay. So R G B to R M A. Understand? Okay. So now all we have left is our emissive channel. Okay. So let's go ahead and make this one. Emissive. Emissive. And emissive and all we have to do from here is technically we could just go straight into our emissive channel uh, which doesn't seem to be here oh there it is so that would be all we would have to do and now the emissive would pipe right into that channel but because emissive is one of those things where you really want to tweak and get just right so it's just bright enough and often we'll want to blink it or do different things with our emissive channel we're going to take this a little step further uh, so and this is kind of cool so if we want to overdrive this value we can overdrive it so what we're going to do is we're going to go add math and we're going to go multiply Okay, and we're going to take this RGB and plug it into here. So RGB, and we're going to delete this line, and we're going to plug this RGB into here. Okay, 
Now, you'll notice that it's giving me, it needs another connection because this is empty still. So this isn't a working shader yet. So what we have to do is now pipe this in with a value, okay? Now we could just go in here and give it a value. We can say one, okay? And now it would be basically the exact same as whatever the emissive is because anything times one is the same thing as what it was, okay? But we don't wanna do that. We wanna give ourselves the ability to adjust this right from our controls, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go add, add, input, material variable, okay? Now, in the material variables, we have direct input. So if we were to go ahead and go here, we'll see that we now have this material variable and it's got zero, zero, zero. So that relates to RGB, okay? Um, and technically, this is just a vector three um, material or a vector three input. So we're, we have three vector values. We have, you know, or I'm sorry, we have one vector value consisting of three scalar values, but we don't really want that. What we want is a scalar value, okay? And we can change this. We can change it to scalar. We can change it to vector two, which we would get the RG. We can change it to vector three, which would have RGB. Or we could change it to vector four, which would be RGBA. So what this basically means is how many values is this going to contain? So scalar is one value. Vector two is two values. So we have R and G. And Three is three values and four is four values, okay? But again, for this need, we only need the scalar value, okay? And we're just gonna plug that into here, okay? Now, in our material variables, we have some choices. So right now, all we could do is, because the min is set to zero and the max is set to one, the most we could do is pump it up to normal, okay? Because again, one times anything is itself. So but we can lower it down by the zero number, okay? So we can make it dark or make it non-showing. But what we really wanna be able to do is overdrive it as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this max value to something like 20, okay? And by doing that, we can now drive this value above whatever it was. So if we have, you know, let's say our emissive isn't quite bright enough, we can pump it up with this um, with this max value, okay? By simply just going into our shader now, and we have this material variable, and we can we can ride it up up to twenty, okay? Uh, we're just going to leave it at one for now, but we can drive that wherever we want, okay? So now you can see that we have our color, we have our RMA, and we have our emissive inputs, and we have this material variable. Now we don't want to leave it as material variable, so let's go ahead and rename this. And let's call this emissive adjust. Emissive Now, as you noticed, I didn't use capital letters and I put a space, okay? Just to make it uh, uniform to the way that I like to work. Uh, but you can technically name it anything you want. I just would avoid capital letters and I would avoid um, spaces, okay? So I have emissive adjust now and we're all set, okay? So if we look at this now, we have emissive adjust. We can adjust that value. Now, let's say we wanted a slider instead of this roller, okay? Because the rollers are nice, but maybe you want a slider, okay? You do have some options on this input as well. So let's go ahead and look. So here we have UI type. We can change that to a number field, in which case now it'll be just a number. Oops. Yeah, a number field. We can do a number slider, which is now a slider. Or we can do a checkbox, which would really only be relative if we had a zero and a one value. So you would use this if you had... Um, you know, basically the min was zero, the max was one, and the step was one. So then what would happen is when you checked it on, it would be one thing. When you checked it off, it would be the other thing. It would either be the min or the max value, okay? So you can even do check boxes in here. We're just gonna worry about the number slider for now because I like the sliders. And we're gonna go ahead and save this material, okay? Because we're pretty much done here. So now we have, uh, you know, our emissive slider, which again, I wanna just set to one. And we've got our color, RMA, and emissive. And the RMA pipes to the green, red, and blue channels, or I'm sorry, red for roughness, green for metallic, B for, uh, or blue for ambient occlusion. So we now have all of our materials set up in our shader, and this shader is ready for use. So let's go ahead and save it. 
and let's take a look at what we have, okay? So now, inside of our shaders material, we have this, this shaders, okay? And let's go ahead and try to apply this to our, our record player, okay? So let's go content, models, record player, and now, we're going to want to be able to use this record player with that material, okay? So if you look here, we have this parent resource, and right now it's using the standard shader built into Stingray. If you notice, it says core here, okay? So it's going to the, the wherever your Stingray is installed, then it's finding Stingray renderer, and it's finding shader import, and then it's finding standard, okay? So this is just a graph, just like what we just created, only this is kept within the parent of, you know, this is parented inside the core of Stingray. So it just knows to look there, okay? We don't want to use that one, okay? We want to use this new material that we just created. So let's go ahead and hit this folder button. And here we can just type in RMA. And now we'll see that we have RMA EM shader. And I'm going to go ahead and double click that. And now you'll see that, well, everything turned black and we have our, our shader changed. So we don't have all those options anymore. We now have you know, our emissive adjust, our color, our RMA, and our emissive. So let's go ahead and hit save. And let's create a new folder in here. Let's go create folder. And let's go uh, RMA underscore textures. Okay. And here we're going to import all of our RMA textures. So let's go ahead and grab our record base color, our record normal, and our record RMA. Open. And we're going to go import. And we're going to go record player RMA, record player normal, and record player emissive. And hit open. OK. Now, you'll already notice that we have less files here, right? We have far fewer files, actually. So if we look into the old textures folder, we had quite a number. Now we have at least two less. So you can imagine that over the course of a project, this will become a lot more efficient. So anyway, uh, that was just a caveat. So let's grab our record player material, which has now been converted to the RMA shader using our parent shader. Um, and we're going to go ahead and grab our color. So, oops, we can do it that way too. I, I should show you that actually. So if I were to go record player, I can grab this record player um, base color. Oops. Yeah, this is why I don't like to do this. Uh, but you can find them through that folder system. So we'll not do that, though, because I find this a lot easier. Uh, record RMA goes to RMA. Record, oops. Record emissive goes to emissive. And record color, where's color? Hmm. Oh, I didn't import it. Record player base color. Record player base color goes to base color. Okay, so there we have our, you know, shaders all applied using the new shader system. Okay, so we've got again base color going to the base color. The emissive is going to this emissive channel right here. We've got our little emissive. And if we wanted to, we can actually pump that, which I'll show you in a second. We have our normal giving us our little bumps and, and, and you know, surface qualities. We have our RMA being broken up into the two, three channels of roughness, metallic, and ambient. And that's basically it. So this is ready to go. Now, for the record material, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and grab our folder. And we're going to go ahead and grab our RMA EM file, which is going to convert over our um, our shader to the new uh, new improved shader, which is more efficient. We're going to hit save. We're going to go into our RMA textures, grab our record base color, our record RMA, and. Oh, I never connected the normals. OK, so that's good. So. Um, one thing I forgot to do was I forgot to add the normal map to our choice of inputs. Okay, so how would we go ahead and get there? Well, one way we can do it is we can navigate to it again. But luckily, Stingray gives you this little button right here, which allows you to pop to that resource. Okay, so we can click that and it'll take you right to the resource where it's located. So now we can just double click it. 
And let's go ahead and add our last channel, which I can't believe I forgot, but I did. It happens. Um, and we're going to go right click, add material uh, sampling, sample texture. We're going to connect this to this, and we're going to connect this to our normals. Okay. So, and we just need to name this normals. Normal, oops. Normal and normal. Hit save. And now our normals are being piped into this uh, standard base. Okay, so now what we have to do is just one last step. <clears throat> Um, in the normal, uh, because this is just using the standard, you know, material uh, input, uh, it, it will naturally set itself to sRGB color. So what we're going to want to do is actually make sure that this is set to normal map. Okay, so just drop that down and that's really going to be it. Okay, so now we can save this and we should be good to go. Okay, so we can close this out. And we'll notice that now if we go back to this asset browser, and uh, I don't know if you saw what I did there. I selected the model and then I right clicked and said find asset in browser. That takes you directly to the model. Okay, that's just a, a little trick I know. Okay, and now what's the problem is that it doesn't have a normal. So these look really weird because it's not using any form of a normal. So what we need to do is apply a normal to it. So let's just go ahead and grab our RMA textures and we're going to grab our record player normal and pipe it in. And now it'll look good. And now we should actually have surface undulations. So yes, we can see them sitting there on the surface. The wood has some surface bumps and we're getting some, some qualities out of it we weren't before, okay? And we can do the same thing for our record player or for the record itself. So let's go to RMA textures and we're gonna go to, uh, oops, normal, okay? And hit save. And now we have our normal working here as well. Okay. Okay. So the last thing we're going to really need to do is just kind of look at how we can use this emissive adjust to our benefit. So let's go ahead and grab the record player material and let's just see what that, uh, you know, what adjusting this value is going to do. So now what we can do is we can lower it, in which case we'll see that that, that color goes away right here. And if we tone it up, we're actually going to get that color to bump up. Okay. So that's why we like to have an adjustment on the emissive adjust, uh, because it really does allow you to kind of play with that emissive channel uh, a little bit more. And since, you know, usually lights are things that are going to be the turned on or turned off, <clears throat> you want to have that ability to be able to kind of drive it if you want to. So we could, you know, programmatically adjust this. So you can do, you know, lots of different things with this emissive adjust. You can programmatically change it. You can, you know, do things, you can turn it on or turn it off, or we can do it with, you know, flow or whatever else. So it just gives us a little bit more control um, because we have this adjustment here. So, um, so that's basically it. Um, that's how you go ahead and create your own shader channels. You know, that's how you create your own shaders. That's how you create um, everything manually, okay? So the next part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do exactly the same thing, but we're gonna do it all inside of Maya because this is wonderful. Um, in fact, this is the way I generally work. Uh, however, there's many times where, like let's say you're a large studio or if you're planning to build out a library and you wanna have all your materials, you know, kind of pre-built so that you don't have to go through this effort once it's imported, and you want to do it just once and you're going to use this same record player in multiple um, games or multiple projects, then this wouldn't be the most efficient way because you'd have to do all this stuff over and over and over again for every project uh, because we did it all within Stingray. So therefore it's all right here, right? So that's not super convenient. Um, what might be more convenient for you is to do it all in Maya. So the next tutorial, we're going to go through um, exactly how to do exactly what we just did, but we're going to do it all within Maya and we're going to save it all within the Maya file, okay? And we're just going to import it, and it's going to have everything done for us in one pop, okay? So I'll go through how we do that um, in the next tutorial. So I will hopefully uh, see you there, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. As always, you know, leave your comments and questions and, uh, um, you know, concerns in the comment section, and I look forward to seeing you next time. All right, great. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this. All right, great. Bye-bye.